Hi guys, welcome to this third tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with Micro C Pro for PIC compiler. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to read a switch connected to a PIC microcontroller. Switches are digital input and are widely used in electronic projects as most systems need to respond to user comment or sensors. It's good to know how to read a switch because the same principle could be used to read a wide range of other digital inputs like a push button, limit sensors, proximity switches, or even a keypad, which is basically a combination of switches. Connecting a switch is straightforward. All we need is a pull-up resistor or even a pull-down resistor. Without this resistor, it will be difficult to determine the state of the pin. Let's say, for example, if a pin, let's say this pin RC0 is configured as a digital input and there's nothing connected to it. And if the PIC wants to read the status of the pin, will it be 5 volt or 0 volt? It's really difficult to tell. But with a resistor, connected for example to VCC. This resistor is called pull-up resistor because it pulled the pin high to plus VCC. When the switch closes, the current will flow from plus 5 volt to ground because the current always flow to the, the least resistant path and the least resistant path is gonna be to ground. There gonna be nothing going to the the pin and basically the pin is gonna be low and when the switch it open then this path is gonna be very high because it open then the pin is gonna have 5 volts so it's easy to read it's either low voltage which is zero or high voltage which is plus vcc and the other thing if there is no resistor when i close up the switch it's going to be basically a short circuit because there is no resistor in the path. In this configuration, using a pull-up resistor, if the pin is low, it simply means the switch is closed. If I switch off the, the switch, the pin is going to be low. And if the pin is, is high, let's say I've got plus 5 volt at the pin, it simply means the switch is open. Then it's easy to read the status of the switch. The next question we can ask ourselves, what should be the value of this pull-up resistor? There is no quick answer to this. The larger the resistance, the slower the pin in responding to voltage changes. This is because the system that feeds the input is essentially a capacitor coupled with a pull-up resistor. And as you know, a resistor and a capacitor basically forms an RC filter, which can take up some time to charge and discharge. On the other hand, if you select a lower resistance, when the switch is closed, there's going to be more current that's going to pass from positive to ground. And basically, this is not a good idea, especially if the circuit is battery powered. Generally, 10K resistor should be fine. The other thing I would like to talk about is switch debouncing. Mechanically, metal contacts are not perfectly smooth. That's why when a switch closes, it doesn't perfectly close immediately. It bounces on and off so fast before it can stabilize and stay either open or close. In normal situation, this debouncing period is so fast, we can't even notice it. Let's say when you're switching on and off your light switch, normally you're not going to see the light on and off before it stay on or off, because this period is so fast. But a microcontroller can detect this. That's why we have to come up with a method to limit this bouncing effect of the switch. The easiest, as we're going to see in the code, is to create a short delay. Let's say we use a delay of 10 milliseconds. If we read a switch 
we give it a delay of 10 milliseconds and we read it again. If it's still closed after this delay, we can conclude that indeed the switch is closed. We've built a simple circuit. When the switch is closed, the LED will be switched on. And when the switch is open, the LED will be switched off. In this circuit, we're going to use the internal oscillator of the peak microcontroller. So we're not going to connect any external crystal oscillator on our circuit. We're also not going to use any external reset circuit. So the MCLR pin will be available as a normal input-output pin. So let us go to our code. The first thing we're going to do is to set our configuration bit. To do this, you can go to Project, Edit Project, and here you can specify all your configuration bit. We said we're not going to use an external oscillator, so we selected the internal RC oscillator. Whatever you're not going to really need, it's always a good idea to disable it. We're not going to use the fail safe clock monitor, we're going to disable it. We're not going to use the burnout reset. We're not going to use the watchdog timer. So the other important thing is the MCLR pin. You have to disable it because you're gonna, we're not going to use it. And you mustn't forget to select the correct peak microcontroller you're going to use. In this example, we're going to use the peak 18F2220. And the frequency, the oscillator frequency, we're going to use 8 MHz, which is going to be internal 8 MHz. Click OK. When we switch on our peak microcontroller, the pin RB0 to RB4 are configured as analog input by default, but the pin RB5 to RB7 are configured as digital input. Because we connected our LED on port RB0, we have to disable the analog function on this port, and this is done in the EdCon 1 register. As you can see from the data sheet of the PIC 18 this is the EdCon register 1. If you want to disable all the analog functions, we have to set a 1 to the first 4 bit of the EdCon register. So basically we're just going to disable all the analog functions because in this example we're not going to need any analog function on any port. So we're going to switch off analog to digital converter on all pin. The second thing we're going to do is to set the direction of our port because we connected our LED on RB0. So we'll have to set RB0 as an output pin. To do that, we use the tri-state register as we have learned from the previous tutorial. If we set the tri-state register to zero, that corresponding pin or port is going to be set as an output pin or port. But if we set it to one, as in this case, because we connected our switch on RC0, we set it to one, then this pin is going to be an input pin. And in our while one loop, we're going to start reading the status of our switch. If our switch is open, RC0 is going to become 1. Then we're just going to create a small delay. This is just a switch debouncing delay. We're going to set it to 1 millisecond. And I'm going to check again the status of the switch, if the switch is still closed. And if indeed the switch is still pressed, then I'm going to output a 1 to my RB0 to switch on LED1. And else, if my switch is open, then I'm going to switch off my LED. Let us build our project. To build a project, as we have learned in the previous tutorial, you click on this icon Build, or you can come to the menu Build. Then it's going to build. There is no error. So it's going to generate an X file that we can use to load into our PIC microcontroller. If you want to start the programmer, you can click on this icon, Build and Program. Or from the menu Build, you can say Build and Program. It's going to build, but it's going to start the programmer as well. 
So if I click on write and I connected the programmer to my PC, then the programmer is gonna load the code from my PC into the PIC microcontroller. Because we're gonna use the simulation, we're not gonna program our PIC. So let us go to our simulation, right click, edit properties, and I'm gonna load my code, switch.x, click OK, start the simulation. You can see, because my switch is open, my LED is also off, and you can see my positive 5 volt is on RC0, but when I close my switch, the current is going to flow from the positive supply through my switch to ground. They're going to be zero at RC0. Zero. And when I read the zero on my RC0, then I'm going to switch on my LED. Close the switch. You can see the LED is on. And when I open the switch, the LED is off. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to receive more tutorials in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.